Well, the best way it seems to get an esports team to do what you want them to do is tell them that you don't believe that they can do that thing because <laughs> we counted out dire wolves and then they turn around and they uh, they make a meal out of it, Juves. Yeah, the, I mean, I think dire wolves didn't necessarily play any differently. They just had the champions that they were the most comfortable on and therefore we saw the better dire wolves. I feel as like the first two drafts that they had were really... Uh, uh, I'm going to say, for lack of a better word, experimental, but, you know, it is a playoffs game, and there is no second chances, but you know, a little bit ego -y too from the, uh, from the Chiefs, if I'm being completely honest, the fact that you give uh, Chippies his Camille, I would argue that Chippies is one of the best top laners in the league, uh, hands down, if he has his hands on that champion, and yeah, you know, you probably prepare some counter picks, but, I mean, is it still even worth it to just roll that dice? What do you, like, I was having that conversation with Rusty, and, you know, just uh, another concern I have, which is a... Uh, uh, Probably somewhere that, that Diawolves can find a lot of success heading into the next game or two is that this bot lane for the Chiefs is uh, not going too well for them. And finally, mm. we saw the Diawolves really use that lead that they were able to get 2v2. And it's been two or three games in a row now where they've really dominated Katsuri and Dragku. And something needs to change. I don't know what it is, uh, but uh, it, is a, it is a sinking ship at the moment in that bot side of the map. Yeah, and this was the one draft that really enabled that punish to be more than just CS, right? So this is the first time that we saw something other than the Ash for uh, Vital down in bot lane, and it's the first time we saw them actually like be more aggressive as a duo dive, get themselves those kills, and that was actually a major part of the success here for the Dials, because playstyle-wise, they needed to be the, the bastion of hope. You know, Chippy's had four kills. But there was never really going to be this moment where you're like, Chippies will just 1v9 in a side lane, because he's mm -hmm. against the Jacks, mm. And, you know, eventually Jacks will just handle that. And that's it. And then you're looking at the rest of the draft from the Chiefs, and like, this is fine. You know, they outrange, they can sit back, they have threat. But the fact that they had a fed Kaiser, they were scaling up to the Muramana, and once they hit that spike, they just, like, turned it on, hit the team fights. That was fantastic from the Diables in comparison to the games that we saw past. And I think we saw a lot less of the, the mishap with synergies, you know? Yeah. Like, it was a lot easier to play their composition this time, and they did it. Uh, I also think Die Wolves look like a much better team when Shock has a, a, a mid laner that can, and you know, play for Pryo and play to influence jungle matchup. And what I mean by that is that I think this was the first time that we actually saw Shock have a little bit of agency to move into the, the enemy jungle or move into the chief side of the jungle and really just force and put pressure on Croc while he's on camps. And I think, you know, we've seen uh, uh, stylistically at least, or historically, Shock looks really good when he's on the Syndra, when he's on the Zoe, when he's on these types of control vision, can assassinate you type champions, as opposed to, um, and not to take anything away from his Azir, Azir, because he's had good some, some good performances, but the way that you beat Chiefs isn't to be a, a second to the play team. And I, I still can't wrap my head around that. The Die Wolves, for me, had less tools to engage this game but actually it looked far more proactive and engaged mm -hmm. far more. And so it feels like it's really just a mentality shift that when they're on their specific champions, when they're champions that make them feel good, they're able to kind of turn the game into these chaotic skirmishes where they're able to just, you know, micro-max and outplay their opponent. Uh, so Rusty, Die Wolves have a bit of momentum now. As you said, the, the first two games, the, it feels like they've settled into a playstyle potentially. They've found what's going to work for them, maybe against the Chiefs. What do they do to continue this run? Yeah, look, Die Wolves are a team, and I'm not going to say the reverse sweep is on yet by any means, <laughs> but the Die Wolves are a team with momentum that are pretty dangerous, right? We've, we've known that in the yeah. past, and so I wouldn't be shocked to see that momentum carry through again. Uh, and the way that they do that is definitely akin to what Juves is saying here, right? I think if you're matching the Chiefs' skirmish capabilities and you're you're fine in that, you're not going down in that, then you actually just tend to do better than the Chiefs. Chiefs are mm -hmm. kind of shown already through this whole year that if they win skirmishes, the game's on. Like, but they I, yeah. win. And they but take I, you out easy. Yeah, but I don't also... I don't want to put... You know, the emphasis on the skirmish is great and, and it's definitely uh, something that's going to sway this series. But... You know, uh, and it's hard for me to say because I, I have relationships with these players and I really I really love these guys, but... Burn those relationships to the Yeah, ground. I'm going to burn it. I'm burning the bridge right now. Like, I, 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 I'm on the bridge and I'm I'm standing on it just and I've it set on it on fire. fire. So I'm just falling into the water, I guess. But yeah, uh, Dragku and Katsuri really have, having, a, for lack of a better word, a bit of a nightmare in the bot lane because, you know, there's a 50 CS game where they're lucky enough to win, right? And they do have... You know, in the defense, they do have some very big teamfight influences, very big teamfight impacts. 
But this game was just a, a complete and utter domination with a, a, in, into a Kaiser lane. And you heard on the broadcast earlier, Kaiser's not really a, a picked champion at the moment in the meta, right? Because it just gets Caitlyn, it gets Ashed, uh, it gets, you know, Ezreal, and, and, and they're just far better champions at this current time. But they're making it look very easy in the bot side of the map. And if they can't stop this bleeding, you know, I don't need to give you an int introduction to what Vital does when he has a lead. And at the moment, mm -hmm. he's leaving every single game with a lead and you can only get, you know away with so much. Vital on the broadcast, I've been saying this for a while, Jews, I've just called him a weapon. Mm. He's like uh, in the LPL, they have LWX, who was nicknamed the shotgun, because he just comes in and he's, he's just going to take a shot. And he yeah. could spray everywhere and miss the target, or if it hits, it's dangerous, right? So I think Vital, to me, is actually very similar in a play style. Like, you know that he's just going to be aggressive. Mm. And it's about, like, is he unleashed at the correct time? Yeah. And if he has a lead in laning phase, every single game he plays... It's a lot easier to be unleashed at the correct time. Yeah, and I'm fine being completely honest. I didn't think Diewolves would be the team that could bounce back from a 2-0. I thought they would really uh, kind of just, you know, fold under the, under the pressure. But mm. to their credit, they came, they came out all guns blazing and they actually put on a dominant performance in the early game and managed to close that one out quite convincingly. So I'm actually super optimistic and excited to see this one potentially go to five games. Rusty, at the beginning of the year, I feel like, uh, I remember, I think it was day one or day two, we had Claire come in after uh, oh, yes, one of yes. their first games. And it was just like, was he was, yeah, he was just so tilted by how the team was communicating <laughs> and how it was, he was just like, that was a mess. This is a disaster. Is, uh, a, a Chiefs, do you think mentally still in that place where they can get tilted? Cause there are some people on there with some, uh, emotions that can run pretty hot. Can they handle this kind of pressure at this point? Yeah, look, I think they'd be fine. Like, if we're going to talk about the journey from the Chiefs to that day one of the OPL this year to now, there's been a full year where the people who spoke only Korean at the time now know English, right? Like, I think yeah. that's a given. I think that'll help a lot, Nick, in making sure that the communication's clear. Uh, and the other thing, like, they have stage players. They have big game players in this team. Mm -hmm. I've said this for years, right? Claire is a big game player. And what I would like to see is not the set mid. You know, give Claire agency to actually be a mm. carry for this team in a game that matters the most. Like, if you have Katsuri not playing well, and Katsuri has said this in interviews as well, Nick, he trusts his team to carry him if he's That's not true. playing well. So they That's need true. to draft for Claire to carry Katsuri if he knows he's not going to be playing well. All right. Well, I'm excited because, uh, yeah, this one felt like it was one and done and we were pinning our hopes for a long evening on uh, Order and PGG. But maybe maybe, maybe the Devils are still in it. Mammoth could do it. You know what? Call me crazy, but I reckon Mammoth can take this one. Uh, all right. Uh, before we jump into Smell CK, I need to remind you uh, that you've got one more chance to make it into the OPL yourself. Our amazing sponsors, Neosurf, are running uh, their competition that we've been doing. The entire split, one more time, uh, this split, where you can join the OPL. OPL uh, as a part of our opening title sequence. All you need to do is send in a video of you joining that opening phone call and DM that video to us at OPL on Twitter and follow at Neosurf Esports on Twitter at the same time. Uh, we're going to pick our favorite ones. A winner gets a $500 Neosurf voucher to use in the League of Legends store, and then runners up get 100 bucks each to use. There are full terms and conditions at watch.lollysports.com. Uh, and uh, obviously, all the winners and runners up get added to the opening titles, as you've seen throughout this broadcast, uh, that are much better than what we've doing. I feel like Juves needs to be in the opening titles as well. He does. How has that not happened? I mean, I don't expect anything less. I come onto this show, all you do is hammer me. So I really didn't expect to be in the opening uh, scene and I thought you'd have something to do with it. The only, the only negative thing I've said to you uh, this entire time is critiquing the, the fact that English is your 17th language. No, but that is the only thing that I've said. We've got a flashback to our history. Now you have a history of making my life miserable. You're a you're a you're a you're I'm a selective this, memory man, <laughs> Rusty. Rusty, back me up and a reminder that you and I have to spend a lot more time together uh, than you and him. Uh, Jews, I'm fairly certain that I 
remember from the beginning of my stint on the OPL that I was like, Jews is at the top of the list of people that uh, that I would like to have. Uh, well, that's not true. Choo Choo's was on the top of the list and then Choo Choo's kind of left. So now he's gone. But I was like, Jews is definitely a solid number two yeah. of who I would like to bring on the broadcast all the time. I put you in the painting segment, which by far is the best segment we've ever done. By far. We created Bob Ross together. You and I had this fantastic working relationship. Suddenly COVID hits and that uh, we spent an hour together where we fill. It's... It's, it's arguably one of the greatest moments in OPL history. But, people have spoken about that. People have still talk about that as being one of the great esports films. Something happens, though. I don't know whether lockdown is rotting your brain or you have got some weird agenda where you're just trying to usurp me at the end of this split, but you've become a shithead to me on broadcast <laughs> after that. And I feel like that hour ruined our relationship. No, but you want me to thank you for being good at my job, okay? Just because you got me on broadcast, that's because... because because I'm good at the job, okay? I don't need to thank you for being good at it, right? What? <laughs> did he? Did he? What? Well, you're, say, you're, say, you're saying that you, you, you used your own merit, your own skill, your own tenacity, your own advantages to get on this broadcast. I'm saying... You're on this broadcast because of who no, no, you no, no, are, no. not because of who I say you are. What I'm saying is that if you really thought I was as good as I am and you really want to be on the broadcast, you would mm-hmm. give me your job. Right, okay. I don't think you're that good, but I've oh, been okay. trying to get rid of Spawn for a split. It's ridiculous. I, yeah, I and thought so he I, was gone. I actually accepted to come on today with the, the, the thought that he was gone. I mean, there, look, he, he is casting right now. If he doesn't come back to the, to the hangout, the couch, uh, for the next round of games, then we know that he is, he is gone and that you are stepping in this place. Is, are we mending the relationship? Is the only way that you and I can move forward we as friends? Yes, we as bond men, over hate for other people. Is, yeah, is by getting <laughs> someone else's life destroyed. Is that how this is going to work? Uh, FBI is actually calling me on Discord. Let me hang up. What did you say? Uh, me? Yeah, FBI actually just called uh, me. Uh, no, that's fine. You should have answered the call. I feel like I, I should have. Liked to hear we have to shout that. him out. He did. He did win the LCS today. Uh, not actually win the LCS, but he won the the hearts of the LCS fans. It beat double if three times in a row. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but. But he still take that. But he still. Uh, but he's got spawn in his corner. We don't want spawn in our corner. By the power of ipso facto, we don't like FBI. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're about to jump into game number four. It's cancelled. Uh, I'm cancelled. Say that we love FBI. Oh, oh right. Oh, ah, that's so, where so I draw the line I'm here the bad as well. Guy again, Jesus God, he just can't keep up. Uh, do we think the Diables can do the reverse sweep? Let's go around the horn, Chiefs. Uh, I look. I'm still. I still think that the Chiefs are going to win. I don't necessarily think that the Diables will get the reverse sweep off. I think they'll they'll make a series of it. Potentially, we go to five games, but I think Chiefs just need to tweak their draft a little bit, and we've got it. Rusty. I, I mean, the, it is draft dependent, but I believe it diables with momentum. I reckon they can, at the very least, take us to five. Nick. Yeah, and they're still spitting after last split, so they want to make it the whole way. And there's only one way to do it, and that is power their way through the Chiefs in this next game and the one after. So let's get to it. It's game four for diables and Chiefs, and it's coming up with the Makers Jam Select. That's right, it is game number four in this series. The Die Wolves have managed to bring it back. They're going to look to try and uh, cause the biggest reverse sweep that we've seen. Almost like that is their brand right now. They love their pressure. They thrive underneath their spawn. But the Chiefs, we cannot discredit the fact that they had two very dominating opening performances here. Yeah, and I wonder whether it is that hiccup, Skimmy. Like whether this is going to be the game where the Chiefs just come out, you know, take care of business, more of game one and two. Or whether the Die Wolves have made the adaptations in the draft that they needed to to actually be able to take this series because I've seen sets like this before and there was just something about how Diables actually closed that game out you know that full on 5v5 team fight no hesitation diving into the back line of the Chiefs they kind of out Chiefs the Chiefs by the end of that game so if they can continue that you know potentially with some different picks uh, I think we have a real shot of going the distance 
Look at this already, Spawn. They said that the Syndra worked wonders for them last time. They first picked it then, they'll first pick it again. A lot of those bands are coming on through. The Renekton, obviously, to target Claire from his uh, standout performances so far, but the respect is still being shown to uh, Miru's Lee Sin. And after that last performance he pulled off the Lilia, now it warrants a band as well. And I'm not sure if this set goes mid lane, I'm not sure I like it, Skimmy. It is technically a triple roll flex. It could even be a four roll th flex, right? Mm -hmm. If the end still plays it in the top lane. But I think that Claire needs to be on a control move. Like, I want to see him play Orianna into this Syndra and yep. fight fire with fire. Teams, when they were picking Syndra, were banning Orianna every single time against the Chiefs. So I, I think, like, across the board, there are answers to these picks. And at a certain point, you get a little bit too clever for your own good. I actually like what Divals did, where they threw it all out and they went back to what was working for them during the regular season. And I think if Claire gets Orianna here, and they put that set bottom lane to brawl with the Blitzcrank. I think that this is the Chiefs back on track to how they were playing the, you know, 10 dominant weeks of the OPL. Let's see what they do. Will they go for their instant response? Will it be a control major? Will it be a pop of assassin like LeBlanc? It's been banned away in this series once already. Ooh. They're going to do neither. They're going to say, there's only so many things you can ban. The calf has popped off. We're going to tap into some of that magic again. Good luck. In medieval times, Skimmy, when someone had besmirched your honor, you would take off your gauntlet and you would toss it on the ground. And it was a sign of a formal challenge. That meant that you were about to fight each other to the death, right? Picking Karthus on red side three pick is literally like slapping Mir in the face. That is just Croc saying, I am out and out a better jungler than you and nothing you can take right now will actually be able to compete with what I want to play. Like, I'm just picking it because I want to play it at this stage. Like, there is nothing you can do to stop me. He's uh, laying down the gauntlet, showcasing that I'm fantastic at this one. What is your response to it? I don't care what the matchup's going to be. I've shown you why you need to be scared so far. You need and to they be don't even scared again. Junglers. They don't care. That's like, what I mean. It's just so much confidence. He can take Graves. He can take Olaf. Like, there are so many champions that you can take into this Karthus that are theoretical counterpicks. And he just, he doesn't, like, okay, he banned away Olaf. So he at least gave one respect ban there. But I just want Mir to pick Graves and just run over the top of Croc. Because I feel like that shouldn't be allowed in professional League of Legends. <laughs> what is exciting to see, though, is that the Blitzcrank hasn't been banned away. And as opposed to the Nautilus, it's going to be chosen here by Decoy. And obviously, one big thing to talk about is the fact that it shreds shields when he goes for the uh, for the explosion, right? So the fact is, he can pull anybody. It could even be the set. Yes, he has that deceivingly uh, strong second health bar. And much like that of a Camille as well, you pick anybody, they'll fall on down. Okay, so this time it's going to be the Chiefs taking the Camille. Calling it right now, Malphite. Give me the Malphite, Chippies. Like, I really want to see it. I want to see Malphite Graves. Nunu sucks. Get rid of Nunu. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yone. Can't pick that. Can't pick that one. Looks good. Not going to be happening it does here today. Look good. I actually. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. Side lane pressure. It's the key word here today. This is a harder matchup than I think people give credit for. Um, so what does Fiora have in her kit? She has a repost. Um, really important because there's two parts to the repost and people forget about the second part. Obviously, if you land it whilst they're landing CC on you, the CC is reflected to them, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it also just reduces your attack speed, which in these brawls is really crucial. Um, so it's, it's a tough matchup for Camille to be able to navigate, but I think she can win it, uh, especially given the fact that the true damage is used there. Fiora will be slightly winning. I do like the fact that it is going to be Graves here. I think that, to be honest, Skimmy, I think that Chiffy's just didn't want to go out playing a tank. Yeah. He said, after how I played game two on the Camille, I deserve to be able to go out playing a carry. If I'm going to go out, give me the skill matchup and show that I'm better than this kid. Chippies has been around for a long time, right? I've been watching him play the game for, I think, seven years. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, like, after how well he played that last game, he deserves it. The chat has also just pointed out sat, set mid, and I'm just monka my face <laughs> off right now because it definitely did not work that last game, Skimmy. Yeah, I didn't find the levels of success. We found a few, uh, you know, pop-off moments. One lovely little showstopper where he flashed through mid to take him underneath that turret. 
And with the uh, Merc Tread Rush, obviously you can understand what it's trying to achieve. I suppose elsewhere on the map, the uh, option for Drag Coup, it could have been the Morgana still up and available to try and cancel out a lot of the engage and stun potential that the Dire Wolves are looking to throw their way. But I, I think you really highlight a fantastic point. You know, the fact that Chippies has brought into a lot, uh, these tanks into his uh, into his arsenal coming to split two. He's played two games already on the Orn. He's like saying, hey, I can pop off. Just give me a champion. Let's go back to sort of what our identity was resolved around or re revolved around, I should say, in, in, in split one. Let me just pop off. Let me just carry. And let me take that skill matchup into the Camille. So we'll see whether he's able to win it, because whilst it is a skill matchup, you always have to think, skill matchup versus skill matchup, they've got a Karthus. Mm -hmm. And I think you really like put it well the first game. It's like, he won the one-on-one -on -one with the Karthus ultimate, but Karthus just drops like 200 to 250 damage on the other carry's head uh, very early on. So I think that Mir going to have to do a better job this time around of shutting down Croc. He's definitely got the pick to be able to do it. I personally love Graves into Karthus. Um, so, I agree. Skill matchup with the caveat that you have to go after Karthus first. Game number four here, Spawn, in our first quarterfinal of the playoffs this year. The Chiefs lead it so far 2-0, but I was able to bring it back to another game after that standout performance. And now they're going to try and go a step further. They want to make the reverse sweep not only a meme, but a trend here. They want to showcase that they have the experience, the ability to prove it on the biggest stage possible. And they want to try and put themselves into back-to-back -back grand finals for 2020. We'll get to see what they can do here. Chippies will get the Fiora. What and is Claire, that skin? Claire just continues to not play majors. He, uh, he just wants to be the tank bruiser. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a mistake this game. I would have taken Orianna and put Drag Crew on... Uh, the set, I, I actually think it's a pretty good matchup for set into Blitzcrank, to be honest. Uh, you just dangle yourself out there, hope you get hooked, and then turn around and punch him in the face a bunch of times. Uh, I really am intrigued by Chippy's skin, though. I've never seen that skin on Fiora. It must be a Chroma. I'm a big fan of Chroma Gaming. Decoy, obviously, winning the Chroma Gaming. There's two things that you need to know about skins, Skimmy. Mm -hmm. A, people always mess up their skin choice, because they go for the skin that looks the best. Okay. You have to play the ugliest skin available. Like, Riot Graves, what a choice. Like, how ugly is that skin? He's just, like, <laughs> grey, right? So, like, A, Miru obviously flexing. And then, B, if they have a Chroma, you must use the Chroma. And if there is an ugly pink Chroma, ugly pink Chroma also needs to be taken. Um, so, I'm a big fan of that. I like Chippy's skin, but maybe it's too pretty. So it's not about looking pretty, no, it's about looking as uh, ugly as possible and tilting well, your opponent to say that, look, tactic. I died to this. Yeah, it's an intimidation tactic. Like, you don't want to fight an ugly champion. Like, you, know, you don't know what they're going to do. They could sneeze on you. In today's day and age, that's a big deal. It certainly so, is. <laughs> we'll see where it goes. Yep, that wasn't a sneeze, that was a hook. As Decoy looks to try and get this one underway so far. Level 2 is there, and that's going to be Drake putting up the shield and ensuring that Katsuri can get a fair bit of uptime with no little retaliation shown back to his way. But after the performance in uh, game number three there, fits the uh, pop-up potential that the 17-year-old Korean import rookie prodigy. Tongue twister there, but he uh, knows that he wants to be aggressive, and if he's got the mobility to gap close, he can shine. That's only his first name, ladies and gentlemen. Skimmy didn't even tell you his second name. Uh, Vital, obviously, a very good player. He's had a series for himself. Uh, out of everyone on the Die Wolves today, I actually feel like Vital and Decoy are the two people that have been pretty consistent across the board. They've picked themselves up a pretty good kill lane here, um, to be honest. We're not going to be able to contest the push as heavily as other lanes, uh, which can be a problem against Karthus. However, Blitzcrank against Karthus in the mid game is quite a good pickup, Skimmy. Um, if you pull him in, destroy him with something like a Syndra, and then disengage the fight successfully, it can work wonders in your favor. And this is what I was saying about Syndra into set. I feel like you actually can't kill him. Like, especially when he goes fleet footwork, he just kind of heals through all your damage. I feel like you're better off playing against the wave as opposed to throwing your spells into set. Of course, unless your jungler is here and wants to go for a gank. As she mentioned, uh, the Q nerf there, the mana cost, makes it a little bit harder. So uh, if you are going to go for the orb, you got to make sure that, well, am I doing it at the expense of this wave, which as it stands, is the case. He's going to get pushed in. Both the junglers hovering around in the area, looking to get the scuttles, and uh, that will be a one for one so far. But can see a bit of chicken again. bait. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Second chicken. It's like, people think when you get counter jungled and someone takes a buff, it's a big deal. That, that's actually not what jungling is about. Second chicken respawn, getting that stolen away from you as a tempo jungler, it's, it's honestly infuriating. 
Because, like, as Graves, ooh, hold that thought. Exhaust down. Exhaust does go out. Drake looks to try and find the first blood in the bottom lane. Not going to take place here, but now the uh, observers are smurfing. They take us to the top side of the map. And he's going to get the better half of Tien so far. Okay, so it looks like Chippies took a cheater recall and came back to lane. And now, Tien is actually going to have to teleport back. There's no way he can walk back to this lane. It is hard frozen. Chippies can now just allow this uh, wave to crash. Collect the farm safely at turret as he goes for a trade and gets put on half health. Collect the farm safely at turret, ship is. And then he should be able to also match his teleport back in this lane with a big item advantage. Um, so I like how this laning phase is going so far for the Fiora. Certainly making it look like a counter pick, uh, if in theory, if it's only a skill matchup. Burns the teleport to get back to lane and push that wave in, and then puts down a control to ensure that he isn't going to be bullied, isn't going to be taken out of the fight, and isn't going to lose a whole bunch if he falls on down. So he's nice and protected so far. What will happen, though, is the Tri Brush Water will expire, and that's the part of the map that Miru is at right now, so I don't believe he knows where this Graves is. Could be a potential wraparound given how pushed up he is. As it stands, Croc is on the opposite side of the map, potentially looking at starting off the first dragon here. And the big thing about Tempo Junglers is sometimes you don't want to show because the inherent implied pressure that you have by being able to move around Summoner's Rift so quickly is actually your biggest advantage. However, in this situation where you're about to tick over to level 6, I think this is a time that you would like to look for a gank. He goes for it. He does indeed. He doesn't have level 6, so won't have the all-in commit, but definitely is going to make sure that uh, Tien is going to have a free lane there. He had to actually burn that flash in that exchange. So he's going to be protected for the meantime. Chiefs will make a cross map play and get the ball rolling with a very early dragon. Much different to how game number three played out when we saw a dragon only started at the 12 minute mark. Oh, not the third one, Skimmy. He's just. His chickens don't belong to him anymore. It's so sad to witness. Yeah, Croc is uh, harvesting oh, up flash. all that protein. He wants to be as strong as he was in game two. We saw what it did that time. Requiems that were taking instantly 50% chunks out of uh, any given member. Off screen, however, Croc had to burn flat. Uh, Decoy had cheated up River, and I'm going to keep calling out to it because he does it the best. On the push-out wave, he goes River, and you never know whether he's looking for a wrap, a cheeky ward, or whether he's actually going to impact a mid lane play. He actually rotated all the way up to Chickens, and then Shock rotated down towards Croc as well, and they actually get the flash out of Croc, which at this stage of the game, so much of the damage that comes out of Karthus is actually the ability to flash in and hit you with Skittles. Yep. Um, so... I think that that's a, that's a really smart move and maybe will actually net themselves a Rift Herald advantage on the top side of Summoner's Rift. Important to note, again, that Chippy hasn't burnt a Teleport for the second time. He's taken two recalls and both times just walked back to lane. Very much playing this game a lot slower than I'm used to seeing Chippy play. And he's got so many options available to him right now. He has the ability to flash an all-in commit with that 1v1. Obviously, to be conscious of the uh, Carthus influence, but has to cross map play, can teleport bot lane. If a fight were to go against them, you can see that the Chiefs have been the ones uh, looking to make things happen first and foremost. And with Cat 3 so, so close now to level 6, you could be looking to pull the trigger with that arrow. And that's actually a really nice ward. Uh, I can't see whether there is actually another ward in that brush, but that trading pattern just afforded him a lane ward that was probably unspotted um, from Thien. And he's trying to continually pull these creeps off turret. Even though it looks like Thien wants to be active around Summoner's Rift, wants to go have a look elsewhere. Um, Chippies is just making him lose one or two CS every time he leaves wave. And it is starting to be impactful because this is a 10 CS lead on this Fiora. Despite the fact that he's been able to maintain uh, the advantage of teleport the entirety of the game. Uh, however, on the flip side, got to once again point out the fact that Croc has been completely untouched in this jungle matchup. And I think as the Graves, the onus is on you to kind of make some skirmies happen earlier on in the game. Uh, not to say Graves doesn't scale all that well. I think that he is also a hyperscaler. It's just that, like, Carthus scales like no one else. He has a five-man tactical nuke. Yeah, he certainly does. I think it's a fantastic way to really... Uh uh, summarize it and to, uh, really showcase that uh, he picks up blindly, then doesn't really want to ban away too many junglers. He's like, I'm just confident I will uh, not only show disrespect there in the draft, but I'll just pick up all your Raptors on cooldown. And if you want to be tempo based, then it's just not going to be a possibility right now. So the owner seems to be on Miru to make something happen. He will be able to get these uh, Raptors this time around, so happy days for him.
But a small bit of a lead is uh, creeping up in the mid lane as well in favor of Shock. We're seeing that clear push the wave and then roams. And all this just to uh, free up control off this river uh, for Croc to execute around. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this flip, however, because you can see Chippies has teleport advantage, so he can sit around. They can fight this 4v5. And because there is an ultimate across from Vital, he can join from nearly mid lane. Yeah. And I think that the Chiefs are actually going to have to give this up. They might get a teleport out of Chippies, who will have to go bottom lane afterwards. But I think that flip is actually pretty bad. And you can see that they're still looking to fight it. There's we'll the hook. The they pick up Drag Koob. He's forced to try and jump back to his teammate right now. The Herald continues. They're looking for the engage. There's the ultimate in his graves. Taking down the Carthus. Here's the Requiem. Decoy falls on down, but that ultimate will tickle. It won't do much at this stage, but Vital wants blood. He killer instincts in. As soon as the damage is done, he receives an exhaust. And now he's looking for more. A two-man scout of the week. Surely has to come on through. Clear. Flashing in. Receives a huge shield. And there's no Blitzcrank to tear it apart, but his health bar will fall down all the same. Tien could not intervene. He could not assist. And he's going to look to try and crash this wave in as quickly as possible. Without that uh, Hydra to crash on through, it's making it quite hard. And... The Dire Wolf's going to find themselves a strong macro advantage. And you can see that that's exactly what I was mentioning, Skimmy. The fact that this was going to be a 4v5. Now, the Chiefs, they did a really good job. I think they actually went two for two on the back end of the trade, which is phenomenal in a four versus five, but they still lose out on the objective. And now this Graves is in a position to be fed. And I talked about this last week when Dire Wolves played. When you have yourself a counter matchup, or a matchup that's really pivotal, you know, Lee Sin into Olaf, Graves into uh, the Karthus, sometimes it's just whichever one of that matchup gets the kills first will be able to take it over. And now with a 600 gold advantage, being able to pick up Warrior, you know, Caulfield's Warhammer, that's 25-ish AD. When you complete it into Caulfield's War uh, into Warrior, it's 60 AD. It is the biggest power spike in the game. He's just going to be able to put this... Uh, game on farm now. He's going to be able to accelerate his lead, and I think this is now panic stations for the Chiefs. What is their response? What is their immediate retaliation to this? They're going to pick up the scuttle first and foremost, and then they're going to look to put that dragon on cooldown as well. That'll be their second dragon of their game, and with their bot lane pushing into the first turret as well. Mid lane. He has a lot of pressure and a lot of consistency, but Adai was going to respond in similar fashion. They're going to push topside and actually just beat out what the Chiefs could achieve by summoning that Herald. And as you say, there's a bit of a skirmish taking place in mid two because Tien was there. Used ultimate. And this is actually really crucial because Dire Wolves have taken two plates in the bottom lane. And, uh, sorry, Chiefs have taken two plates in the bottom lane and Dire Wolves have taken two turrets in the top lane. And plates are really valuable, Skimmy. Yeah. But two turrets are way better than two plates. They will also be able to get themselves the dragon. But at this stage of the game, the gold is just so much more meaningful. And this is once again going to be a fire dragon. And if the game stays even for the next five minutes, which is quite easy to do as a direwolf, they're going to be fighting this infernal dragon with a 3,000 gold lead. And I definitely know from a direwolf fan, I'm thinking, oh, four infernal dragons back to back. That looks pretty nice. That would be and, juicy. And, uh, and knowing that those two turrets have fallen down as well, it's a playground really for Fiora to execute on. Knowing that you can potentially threaten a backdoor or look to try and make a sneaky cross map play. You know that the Chiefs want to force fights. You know that they want to go at you. If the Chippies, uh, if, uh, Chippies can continue to find success with his uh, teleport utilization, then that's a very real threat that the Chiefs have to uh, contend with. However, there is a big window now where Theon will have the teleport advantage and Chippies uh, will not. He'll be the person actually stuck in his lane. In saying that, I do think he is far enough ahead at the moment that he will actually win the one-on-one. -on -one. He's gone Tabbies, which is just such a powerful dueling item, especially against another, you know, melee bruiser. And the fact that he's got two turrets already taken down in the top lane means that he should be able to just push this out as far as he wants and then be able to rotate to the fight first. So even though there is a window right here where the Chiefs have themselves a teleport advantage, I do not think it's going to be as impactful. In saying that, I love this map play coming across from the end. He knows he has a long time to be able to head to the other side of Summoner's Rift, and here we go. Here we go indeed. That's going to be ultimate as a flash and forth to set down that passive. He's going to expire the health bars and do as much as he can. Deku going to buy a little bit of extra time as he's going to try and delay the inevitable here. Three members still collapsing. They're trying to make sure that one of the carries picks up the killer. It will be Katsuri. That picks up the goods in the end. And uh, we can start to see really what the Chippy's factor means. Two tots fall on down. Instantly here is a response. This push towards an inhibitor. And now they're looking to actually collapse onto the Fiora. You can see that he's going to run into Croc in the jungle right now. Croc they're fighting. 
We can see it. There's no flash on this uh, Fiora if need be. The fight continues. We're yet to see what's actually taking place there right now as we're looking at Vital <laughs> just farm TS. Yes. Um, we'll see what happens in their river. I guess nothing's really happened because they're just going to walk away. But the pinks continue. Here we go. Here's the Scuttle Crab. Oh, I'm watching Vital whack creeps when Chippies is literally running for his life. <laughs> So Croc is able to force him out, doesn't burn the ultimate because I assume Riposte wasn't used, which is what I really wanted to see there, Skimmy, um, to see whether it was actually going to be a kill picked up. Um, again, we have another game where the Parthus is actually the highest CS on the map for his team. Credit to Vital, he's actually the only person farming at 10 CS a minute for the entirety of this uh, best of five so far. Vital is the only one that has actually been able to keep up in this game, Shock also doing a very good job. Um, but, have to worry, level 11 about to tick over. Going to be, once again, probably full penetration picked up for this Carthus because there's yep. not really all that magic resistance that can be built. He will be the uh, Sol AP once again, and uh, despite not getting the Dream Start with uh, assists and kills, he will be the one with the highest amount of CS. He continues to keep the jungle on cooldown, farming up a storm. The Vitals continuing to show that level of consistency and uh, farming up to match that right now. If we can get that evolution in a few minutes. And another shot for him to dash on through. Pick up some big, big shutdowns. Uh, we could be in for a treat right now. And I start to look at what that shutdown could represent. What's well, going to be Katsuri, 3-0. Oh, the bounty shouldn't be too far away. That's if they can get onto him. Katsuri has played most of these team fights really safely. Uh, and once again, he has the diving team comp. He probably just needs to use the arrow to get it started. And then we'll probably play the one-man show on the back end of the team fight. Um, a lot of his kills have been clean-up kills, I would say, so far. I haven't really seen him flashing forward in many of these team fights. And Claire, just doing the right thing, allowing this uh, wave to build up and push back into him, deny some CS. I wonder if that means that the Chiefs think that right now they're not strong enough to fight. No, he steps into the wave right now and looks like he has insta-cleared it. Um, so now needs to rotate down for the objective. It's only 15 seconds away from spawning, Skimmy. I would say right now that the Direwolves are the stronger team. It's looking to be that way because you can see the amount of respect that the Chiefs are showing. They're saying, look, we have to continue to push out top wave. We cannot afford to uh, perform a bit of a dance over a neutral objective and have that a condition uh, that we could lo look to lose the game on. They've been fantastic when it's come to having these waves prepped all series long so far. Nice little heads up play for them. This will be the third dragon spawning. Proc wants the level 11. Contest. You can see how much Proc wants level 11. He is soloing the wave. He finally got gets it. it. He does indeed. Now 1v1 takes place here. That's going to be Tien looking to disengage away as best as he can. Hangs into that flash. Feel the tension. You're getting closer and closer to a situation where a fight might take place. Two, uh, sorry, five kills so far. But this could be the start of another one. There goes the arrow to start things off with right now. Croc is looking to try and engage. He sucks with the damage. He's going to fall on down. It is going to be Vital that picks up that kill. Here comes the Requiem. He's got the Haunting guys. It's not going to be enough damage at this stage of the game, but the jungle is gone. It means the Smite steal is not a possibility, and the pings instantly from the Dire Wolves. Let's go through mid. And I wonder whether this is going Claire. to be the Dragon started or not. Because as you mentioned, there is no Smite available for the Chiefs, but they definitely had the Health Bar advantage before they allowed uh, Shock to teleport back in. So now I feel like it has to be a Concede. And that is going to be Direwolves breaking the Soul Point win condition. They would love to start stacking these up. We talk about an Infernal Dragon at the start of a game not being too impactful, but when it comes around to this kind of point in the game where big item spikes are being achieved, that's when you love it. The scaling component definitely works over time here, and that will be the Direwolves utilizing the fact that they have a jungler to contest this one to pick it up to good effect, but that's going to be a Hextech Ultimatum used to try and make sure that Chippies can't live. He reposts and then flashes away, he survives. He was just given every opportunity to fall on down, but Chippy just outperforms again. Yeah, he certainly does. And Chippy's starting to come into this series very nicely. Going to be able to take a recall, head back down into that bottom lane. Nearly has Trinity Force plus Ravenous finish. Those two items just become a nightmare to be able to deal with the Fiora. And you can see mid lane turret under siege right now. Top lane jungle completely belongs to Miru. And uh, I'm... Really sensing a change in this series right now, Skimmy. I think that the Direwolves have got complete control and all of the momentum. 
They most certainly do. A 4k gold lead, their first dragon, but the more important fact has to be that they have got the first three turrets. A cross map play only moments prior, but the Herald just opening up such a fantastic uh, you know, decision for them to play around. They don't have to feel restricted into, well, we need to take a fight, we need to make something happen. They have all these options available for them right now, and it's coming a bit of a squeeze for the Chiefs to say, well, what is our response? Because Croc, despite loving this uh, Carthus, and he's not finding the same levels of success right now, and it means it's a little bit easier for uh, the Dival to itemize towards. And the game really flipped on its head as soon as Mir got himself those two kills. Like, he has been able to close a 20 CS gap since then. He's been more impactful in the team fights. Sure, Croc got uh, pulled into the team last time, uh, and I think he... No, he didn't get exhausted, actually. The exhaust was uh, from Dragku, so he got pulled into the team and blown up instantly. He was able to put out some damage, but you have to say that across the board right now, Direwolves are just outperforming their individual counterparts. 30 CS in the top, 50 CS, 60 CS in the mid lane. They're just uh, playing individually better League of Legends. And at a certain point, that impacts the team fights because items are significant. Even though the Chiefs were able to win team fight after team fight in the first two games, if you continue to fall behind this far in individual lanes, eventually they can just whack you over the head with their item superiority. As you quite rightly highlight, the fact that uh, despite Ketsuri having all those kills, is vital keeping uh, keeping up the tempo, keeping up the pace, and ensuring that he won't fall behind by farming up a storm. He is well ahead of the clock when it comes to 10 CS per minute, but there's a bit of Chiefs now looking to try and up the tempo, defend their first time in the bot lane. That was acquired by uh, Tien single-handedly. They would really love to take down this tier one, oh, so it makes it so easy for a hook like that. Just is the evaporate your jungle. There's Croc, he's gone. Now the Chief's trying to make something happen right now, but they're trying to play on top of this defile. Vital is insane. He needs killer instincts in. Instantly <laughs> dies. What is he doing? We <laughs> sing his praise and he just ends for glory. He tries to make a montage in game number four. Just win the game. They've got a 5k goal. They decoy flashing forwards, but Dragu responding straight away. And at the 21 minutes, the game descends into just a touch of chaos. Yeah, and what he thought was going to happen there, Skimmy, is that the ultimate was going to go on to Thien. He was going to instantly kill him. And then with Chippy's ultimate, was going to have the sustain to be able to stay in the team fight. But Thien just lived for so long. I don't even know how. Dashed out of the back end of that fight. Didn't fall down at all. The rest of the team came to the forefront and were able to clean up the rest of it. But I love the mindset from Vital. As Rusty said, he's an aggressive player. You know he's going to go. It's about facilitating that dive and making sure the boys are there to back him up. And again, the Direwolves win another team fight. They're now 5,000 gold up in this game. A huge gold lead, and it's definitely a showcasing of that confidence there. The fact that Kaiser can dash in like that, this is why he loves to play the mobile carries. This is what he loves. The champions of a fair bit range to execute upon because he can look to try and pull off crazy shenanigans like that. And whilst it looked like a bit of an int, it shows that he is not afraid to make fights happen. There's the uh, Muramana evolution at the 22 minute mark. Nice on time to match that of the CS count as well. And you're starting to wonder, with a minute next on this Dragon, if Diables continue up this momentum with this amount of pressure, Dragon after Dragon, if we do go to late game, in favor what the Diables are offering. Yeah, and I think that this is going to be the Chiefs, like, you know, last real swing at it. Um, he needs to be careful. Yeah, they want to try and take it to the jungler. He's 2 and 4 right now. He's got himself a nice little bounty. Would he live? He survives for the meantime. Then they knock up Clay. Clay's looking for that kill so frantically, hoping that the Showstopper will do some wonders. They will find him off screen, but now Chippy's trying to rise up to the occasion. Clay doing whatever he can, but it's going to be the uh, carries of Dire Wolves now, finding kill after kill. One jungler is gone. A second follows. The dragon spawning in 20 seconds. The junglers won't be here to contest it. How will these teams play around it? What a mess. You can see that Thien, he's going to have his teleport up before the rest of the members should be able to come back on the map. So if you can get bottom lane push here, maybe you can get this dragon as the Chiefs and keep your hopes of the game alive. Chiefs should now know that the Dire Wolves in full reset. I would just pull the trigger on it. They actually catch the recalls. Surely you just teleport and do this dragon right now. They don't do it. Tien has to oh. teleport. He could if he wanted to. He's not going to do it. We're going to run it back with a replay and see how Miru, first of all, got caught. Yeah, so when you have a look at this, uh, the stun misses, so Miru doesn't instantly die. He lives for a very long time on the back end. It's actually Chippies that falls down first. Player will be able to claim Miru in the end. But everyone just dies onto Katsuri. And Dragku can't kill them all. You've got to remember, the top lane's already gone in. Your mid laner is now trying to clean up what the top lane had done. So you've got limited resources available to be able to peel your Ash, who is the Fed carry on this lineup. 
Keeps just going to hit the objective and hope it works. Their support is in Narnia. This is a flip. This is a potential flip. Testamental. Is the smite still there? <laughs> Shock steals it to get a smite. We've got damage and Shock rises up. He doesn't care what this Kafus can represent. Yes, they'll lose a member. Yes, Deka will fall on down. But now, two Infernal Dragons. Go Baron? Like 20 second death timer? Maybe not. Maybe they're, maybe they're not as panicked about the game as what I am. Maybe they have confidence in, you know, Croc scaling up. They, they think that they're actually still in a good spot with this one. Uh, they, they obviously believe in the Camille late game scaling, as do I. Camille's a great late game scaling champion. But you're 60 CS down in the two main carry roles. Like, this Fiora is just starting to build an incredible lead, Skimmy. And Vital's been ahead. Like, it honestly feels like this series that Vital loads into the game with an extra 40 CS in Katsuri. Because regardless of matchup, Vital has just put Katsuri in the bin today. Yep, the young Korean prodigy, making sure that King Robert has to give up that throne, take his crown, and try and take away their confidence as well. A 2-0 build of momentum to start off this series has been undone so far. And the Divorce want to utilize that experience. That whole host of advantages to say, we're going to a game at number five. Don't write us off just yet if you're a fan. Then stick around. This is going to go to distance. It's going to be a long night. We want to make sure that you are entertained. Another three minutes before that next uh, Dragon will spawn. Some break points to look forward to. Well, both these bruises uh, will have their Trinity forces on through. Bit of a lead, however, for Chippies, who's going to be the one to hit that Death Stance first, however. And it's very interesting that he hasn't gone Ravenous Hydra and Sadis is going Death Stance. He must feel like he is going to have to team fight at a certain point in this game. And we have seen him team fight quite well. It's uh, very rare to see a Fiora go 10 CS a minute, but also have, you know, 5 out of 9 kill participation and play a role pretty admirably in team fight. Um, so I think definitely doing a good job is tricky right now. Decoid looking again. Decoid looking for He hits it. How does he hit that one? Underneath the turret as well. Draco is gone. No flash, no ult. And no survival tactics here today. Mira wants to make magic happen, but it's vital. Look at the ultimate, the shield, the flash, the damage. You're gone. Sweet dreams, Chiefs. Your fun stops here. Chippy's reposed and cancels out the wreck. Him now he buys a little bit more time. Hextech ultimatum will be the deal breaker in the end. And much like we've seen the praise of the Diables, the Chiefs continue to fight back. Yeah, they certainly do. But look at all the creep waves in the top just going to waste. Again, the Chiefs are just fighting when the waves are not in their favor, Skimmy. They will be able to pick up a kill. It is a shutdown. It goes over to the end. That's probably the most important member to be able to get it, get it right now. Maybe yeah. the Carthus would be a little bit more valuable. As we take another look at this one, as you mentioned, how did this hook land from Decoy? Throws it out, <laughs> sidestep well from Croc, and unfortunately for Dragu, he just pops it. And then Mir dashing forward, just red smite down, putting out as much damage as he can, and then Vital flying into the back line. I think Chippy's chasing forward here is a step too far. Potentially they could draw Baron in a 5v3 scenario, Skimmy. That would have been very nice. Um, but Karthus Ultimate still doing significant amount of damage. Not all that much magic resistance built up, you have to remember. Um, so across the board, the Chiefs stay in it. Still a 5,000 gold lead right now for the Direwolves. Next Dragon, 90 seconds away, going to be a very big objective to be able to fight over. The Chiefs seem like they're down and out, but every fight, something just goes a little bit awry for the Direwolves, and they can't really put them down. Maybe trying to push the envelope just a little bit further. They don't want to win by small margins. No, they want big, decisive victories. They want to explode this gold lead. It's been stuck at about 5k for a good 10 minutes now. And whilst it is a big, sizable lead at this part of the match, they want it to be bigger. They want to make sure that if Vital is allowed to jump in deep like such, or if Fiora can uh, find some footing, that he can take the 1v3. Not a known uh, asset of a Fiora by any stretch of the imagination, but the 1v1 duels could be big. Two death dances now complete on the side of the Dire Wolves. That is now matched by Tien, who picked up all that shutdown gold. He'll be a big, happy man. But one thing I've got my eyes uh, fixated on a lot here, Spawn, is the fact that Shock now has 16 Magia stacks. Yeah, and just very quietly going about his business. And this is what Shock has become known for within the OPL. He's a terrific mid laner. I think that in their pre-game uh, interview, Chippy said like he just always respects Shock so much because he puts so much work into the game of League of Legends. 
And you can see that that just comes through with his fundamentals. Control of mid lane gained right now for the Direwolf. They are going to be the first to enter. Oh, that's fantastic. They combine the showstopper with the arrow. Instantly, Shock is gone. Forget the stacks. It's a cast of curse on repeat here today. Up goes the Christmas present as Draco says, you shall not pass. And they will not give them the dream situation. You're going to play a little bit harder than that. This Infernal Drake will go the way of the Chiefs. Chippy? TN once more. He has to be careful. He's forced to flash away. And as you say, Chippies was just waiting for an invitation to try and access that fight, but just never found the right opportunity. I think Chippies was actually recalling off to the side as the end catapulted over the wall and didn't really run towards him. I think that should have been nearly a free kill picked up for the top laner of the Direwolves, but maybe a little bit of window shopping going on there, Skimmy. As uh, the end, I mean, that's a bold move, right? He flies into the entirety of the team, but the fact that he didn't get punished for it, uh, I guess, worth. Big worth, and I think it's the best that Ash engage we've seen all season, or sorry, all uh, series long. The link up between both Katsuri and Claire was phenomenal and left uh, very little outplay potential there for Shock. He didn't have a flash. They identified a key target they wanted to take on down, and that will give him his first death of the game. A big one and a part of the match just like this. And now, the gold lead, whilst it was uh, starting to favor the Die Wolves, but once again, keep it closer than it should be. And I wonder whether this Fiora is actually going to build some MR. Um, so when you sit on something like a Kindle Gem, the first thing that comes to mind is obviously Spirit Visage, uh, Skimmy. Yep. And that could hurt the 1v1 potential. So once again, just the fact that, you know, you have a Karthus on your team that's dropping these big ultimates right now. Hook is going to destroy him. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay. Maybe didn't have vision from that ward. Oh, uh, want to commit, but the Chiefs most certainly do. That's going to be Deco the focus. He's forced to flash away. The Die Wolves are split apart. It's a 3v2. They need to try and regroup with the team in the mid lane. There's the Hexagon to make Mike's playing out vital. A free man, Brace Breaker. You just can't do much about it. Cleanse is not OP in that situation. And Vital this time will fall on down. He wants to be the one going forward, but that time he was forced to go on back. Yeah, and this game is getting very dangerous because now the Karthus is ramping up and becoming a serious threat. Nearly level 16 against Gimme. And they're actually just giving all the farm they can right now to Crocs. You can see he's the one farming a lot of these mid lane waves, following the fact that he needs the experience so much vision in this area that they haven't cleaned out, but they're still going to start up the Baron. We'll see whether they can actually get it in time. Well, this is risky. 5v4. They want to say that there's no vital. This is a, chi a time for us to shine. We can do what we can. We can do what makes us so Go strong on. as a team. We have no ultimates, but we don't care. Baron buff will be the difference maker. Now, can we disengage a smoke screen to lock him down? There's a hook! There goes the jungler. Croc is down. <laughs> They'll take out one. They'll remove at least one Baron buff. They want more though. Oh, I flashed on forward, nearly prevented the empowered recall. The direwolves are on the hunt. They've been team fighting with a Fiora, but now they're going to go to a lane where the Fiora excels at. There's an arrow from the base. They want to protect as many of these Baron buffs as possible. That'll be a second casualty. And the direwolves will say, well, thank you for leading us to the lane we want to abuse. Yeah, does that actually mean that the game is on the line right now? Uh -oh. 35 seconds on the support, 15 seconds on the jungler. Do they get to push across? No, they will take it a little bit more slowly, Skimmy. They will just look for the base to be broken in a second area. Hook oh, again! No, hook again! Silence! It's Tien this time! This could be it! Hook after hook! He doesn't miss them! Decoy is playing up a storm right now. It's showing the reason why this has been banned away. And the, the Chiefs just win an insane team fight. They go for the Baron. You think it's such a fantastic play when the numbers favor them. But the Direwolves are just showing this never give up attitude. They certainly are. Now there's two ways to look at this. So the Direwolves obviously get complete run of the map right now, Skimmy. Uh, they just were able to pick up three back-to-back -back picks, two of them thanks to Decoy with two brilliant hooks. So really well played. However, with the Baron buff, it is quite hard to siege into the base. And the Chiefs do seem to be winning some of the team fights somehow. I don't necessarily think they are stronger in the team fights, but they're definitely winning it as Arrow will once again oh, hit. Oh, that's vital. Anthony forced to burn that cleanse just out of range, however, from the Glacial Fissure. And so this should be a long time now that the Chiefs get to farm up. They're going to get level 16 onto their jungler, uh, who 
desperately needs it. He's going to nearly have death cap money as well. I think he can give over this dragon. I don't necessarily think you have to fight the next dragon unless you think the cleanse advantage is actually that significant. And you can just play these double super creep waves until your inhibitors spawn back up. And then take the scaling advantage into those fights. Chippy's has 100 CS up over at the end though. That's a, that's a huge issue. He must it also be sitting issue. on a lot of static money. But this is the question, right? He has the teleport. Does he want to split push or does he believe he needs to fight? Do they think they need to contest with some of those disadvantages that you already highlight? This would put the Chiefs on an infernal soul point. Players on a flank again. Also, Thien on a flank. He's on bot try. That's going to be Tien instantly trying to start the fight off. That's going to be the infernal soul going their way so far. They're going to try and make this fight happen. It's going to be explosive. It's going to be damn right dirty. But Chippies takes out Krog straight away. Members survive. He goes and tries to survive as long as possible, but he's going to fall oh. on that eventually. Oh. That's Chiefs just picking up two. One from the afterlife. Now they're going to run these members down. The flank potential. The Chiefs exuding confidence with their mechanics. But oh. Decoy continues to try and take them down. Unfortunately for Miru, he's a casualty of war. The showstopper kills him as he's recoil. He is tilted off the face of the earth, and the Chiefs just get so much. And I thought the Direwolves would just be able to poke them off the objective, but the Chiefs pull the trigger. And their 100 CS down Camille is nearly single-handedly responsible for winning that fight. Now they have the four dragons, they're going to clean up their base. Skimmy, this game is nuts! Let's take a look at it again. Direwolves, they have good poke, they've got themselves the Kaiser Ws for the spam. They have, like, you know, just so many tools through the Syndra, but they walk in past the choke point, and the end just decisive engagement. Claire off the backside as well, going to be able to grab all of them. And uh, Vital, flashing forward this time, will be punished. So much damage coming out of that Karthus. And uh, as you mentioned, this was kind of, this was a bit of a shame. Decoy thinks he's doing the right thing. He's saving his mid laner's life. Gets ulti, the explosion will take down his juggler. Good guy Decoy, uh, unfortunately, made a bit of a whoopsie there. He went from hero to zero as quickly as could be. He's found so many fantastic picks which have allowed them to get these inhibitors. But unfortunately there for Miro, he's not going to be too happy about that one played on out. What's worth noting is that whilst the Chiefs did get themselves that Infernal Soul, Shock has managed to build up his impact uh, back to where he was with the 16 stacks now acquired, working his way to fully complete an app to try and one-shot somebody out of the equation as we're starting to see take place with the likes of a Camille. Finding a pick and finding a fight. And it was interesting to see that, you know, despite uh, those two inhibitors falling on down, that uh, Daiwo still wanted to go for that fight. Yeah, that was a really crazy situation. Because as you mentioned, Chippy's also had teleport. I think Shock had teleport as well. They could have just pushed mid lane. Maybe look to like 3v5 contest as well and just threaten the end. Lots of different ways you can play that. Obviously hindsight's a beautiful thing and we have perfect god mode vision as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that go our favor as commentators that you don't necessarily have as a pro player. But now Direwolves, they are probably feeling a little bit desperate. The gold gap has been completely closed. 3,000 gold at 37 minutes, like, may as well not exist. Uh, the area it is meaningful is top lane, where there's a full defensive item actually ahead for Chippies over uh, the end. But I don't know whether it's enough to actually counteract how much damage this Karthus is going to do. The playing on vision. Oh, the arrow doesn't connect, though, however. The Bibles thought they were setting up the master trap. The Chiefs said, we can respond. That's a flash. Decoy forced to burn that one. He's trying to be the aggressor. But he's the one that gets jumped upon. Those inhibitors are starting to respawn. Mid lane should be up in just under 30 seconds. And with the Baron buff now just respawning for the second time in this game. Tension continues to build. With locked in place here, you mentioned it with the gold gap, but 15 kills to 15. Not much to separate these two Another teams. Horse. They're gonna lock in place. That's it. The grit doesn't matter. He's gone! The ultimate pop Fiora pops off and so does Vital! Hits him with the Q and Croc has no time to outplay. Now he's playing DDR, dodging all the Skittles. There's the teleport. They want to end this game. He's going straight on through. He's finding any target in his midst, and these members being down for 45 seconds spawn. This is looking grim. Yeah, it certainly is. And you can see that they keep the cannon creep alive, and there is no one left available that can actually kill it. Now onto the turrets, and they have to do something. 
should be the close. He pops the repose, does him what he can. Looking to go for the Hexagon to made him. is gonna pop this Hexagon. Katsuri. Katsuri. Error comes out. Three men stunned. They're locked in place. What can Katsuri do? Runan's going overtime so far, but he needs a tank. He needs a front line to do some damage. He pops the hill. He's trying to run and gun. He's, He's got one, so he finds one. He finds a second. He's gonna fall on down eventually. Both Shock and Miru so dangerously low and fighting underneath a Nexus turret. They could have died to the Just game itself. Him. They're going to just use a Karthus ultimate. Three, Get back to base. two, one. I don't know if he has the time. He's dead. Oh, no, please, please. Oh, he just oh. gets the heal. But no, Miri falls on down. And the Baron is there. What a play out of Katsuri. We said that Vitals had the better of him the entirety of the series. But now, in the time to shine, back against the wall. 2v4 with his support in Dragu. And for a lot of it, Dragu was just hugging the turret. Katsuri's just turned the game around. I need a second to breathe here, Spawn. This game, you can't call it. If it's a quarter final you want, if it's a way to kick off these playoffs, it is here. It's had every emotion under the sun so far. You thought it was looking like a clean sweep for the Chiefs. You're looking like a 3 0. The Divals bring it back. They get closer and closer to ending the game, but the Chiefs say no, it's not going to be as easy as that. 40 minutes is where we're at now. And both teams going to ignore this Baron. This is going to be an Elder fight. Elder is the most impactful buff in League of Legends. When you get it, you win the next team fight automatically. Claire taking a very late shot here, Skimmy. It is 15 seconds until the buff spawns, and he's just gone back to base. Better be a bloody impactful item to ruin tempo like that. However, maybe the Chiefs don't want to be on it. We've already seen that Decoy is able to pull them off the objective and start the picks. Maybe they actually want the Direwolves lineup to have to start an objective for them. Flashes are there for both the AD carries. Oh, There's the hook. That's clear. Locked in place. Can he play the game? He gets his shield. Offering him as a low. Vital goes deep down to the back line. Trying to do whatever he can. He gets the shutdown. Shock is gone. Both the bruisers popping off, but there's a shutdown, there's the showstopper, and there is sweet dreams of Idol. He sees three members low, he sees a triple kill lit up in the sky. He's just unable to execute upon it. And you don't have is a this the Elder? Is it? Decoy. Does he find that pick? He's gonna fall on down. Ash is running them down. Draco is low. Chippies. He's got the aggro of the Elder. He needs the life still. He goes to the repose. He's trying to go 1v4. It's not the dream. It's not the play. Katsuri takes him out. It's been a difference maker. He's found kills. Vitals found CS. But as we've hit this late game, he's the one that's winning team fight success. And Katsuri in the last three team fights has been a man possessed Skimmy. Again, just unleashing pure damage onto the team. Another great arrow to get this one started up. It looked like the catch had been successful, but I think the difference this time was no exhaust immediately coming across it. Into the back line goes to the end. You can see trading places with his counterpart. Vital tried to dive for three, unfortunately was taken down. And maybe that's just one dive too many. It was working at the start of this game, but now they have the damage to be able to deal with him, Skimmy. And uh, I thought this was really, really brave. The team starting up an Elder Dragon when they have a jungler available, especially when they have vision, right? There's just no point to go for that pull if you are a uh, decoy. Just flip the dragon. Send only your jungler in there. It's not like they have a burst mage, but now they have both major buffs. And uh, the Chiefs have the final, uh, the gold lead for what seems to be the final time this series at 42 minutes into this game. Elder and Baron. Top lane is pushing. Chippies has teleport. Could he look to cause a huge upset right now? The Chiefs are looking to stabilize that mid lane. That is where they've lost an inhibitor. They need to make sure this is pushed on out. But can they catch the Diables? Can they set a trap to force Vital to execute upon? Did they just lose too much health? Would this just be an arrow into, you know, the end once again diving onto the back line? Because that's been where the Chiefs have found all their success. When they've been decisive. Diables now, they look like they're mentally very stressed because they're just backing away from the objective. Chief's going to push them down mid lane, not going to force a fight. And we should see a full reset. Katsuri has every summoner available. Vital only has to cleanse. They're going to play it systematically here. Mid in the middle, fall on down. 
as their mid inhibitor itself has now respawned. Now going to utilize that Baron buff to push in towards the bot sides. No unbreakable. And this poke is starting to really stack up. Arrow goes across and misses. Oh. Teleport expended as well. This could be the moment for the Direwolves. If Decoy gets a flash pull onto either Katsuri or Croc, fight is on. Most certainly is. Look at what Croc has right now. He is so insanely fit. He's got the Wizards hat. He's got the Requiem. If you kill him, it doesn't matter. He'll still continue to output insane amounts of damage. The Chiefs are sitting on match points. They're getting closer and closer to that win condition presenting itself. 44 minutes into this one. One kill. You're gone. Croc's there. Final jumps on through. He's got the killer instinct, but has he paid the ultimate price? The Zonians will expire, and so will he. It's a one for one. And every single member of the Diables collapsed to follow up their superstar AD carry, but they have been baited. They have fallen on down as well. They cannot deal with the tanky nature that the Chiefs have thrown their way. They're going to go for the end. They're going to push the Nexus turrets. They're going to go for the slam dunk down towards this Nexus itself. They're going to farm you in the fountain. And they're going to be the team to progress on through to the semi-finals. And what a statement from the Chiefs. They said, yes, you might have been able to pick up the best of five win against us in split number one but in split two the split that sends you to worlds our playoff hopes are still alive you see the elation on their face and that man there katsuri had a much better game two skimmy that was a guy that you know we said was down 40 cs was not looking all that impactful on the ash you know people across you know twitter and stuff were calling him out for it but when push came to shove 40 minutes into that game he had some terrific team fighting he saved the game in his base 2v4 and definitely gets a laugh, laugh, last laugh there. He certainly does. He has called King Robert for a reason. And whilst he didn't get to play of the game at the start of that one, when it mattered, when he needed to, he rose up to the occasion and shows that he is a player that wants to run it back. They have extinguished the hopes and dreams of the Diables. They will not get to run it back in back-to-back -back playoff finals this year. Their dreams have uh, ended here tonight. Unfortunate for them. They nearly tried to create the impossible, the, the run it back form. But for the Chiefs, Adonati in game one and two, culminate with a game four victory. Congratulations to them. They'll be progressing on through to the semifinals. We're going to take a quick break and get ourselves geared up for the next quarterfinal of the night. We'll see you soon. Today is the Neosurf Cup, and we're going to be playing as Misfits. So hopefully we can bring home the win. Neosurf is simple, safe, and secure. You can go to your local shop and get a voucher code and use it online. Preferably to buy League of Legends skins. He's <laughs> got it! This is dead! He's got it! If you're craving the taste of your favourites, head to Macca's for a fast, safe, and contactless drive through experience. For your Macca's run, contact free, we'll be here.